Hey family, we have some crazy news to share with you today. We had one of the largest cyber attacks in history on Tuesday. The attack happened to those in Ukraine, to their infrastructure, as well as in the United States, which caused the largest mobile phone carrier to lose power and customers were unable to use their mobile devices. And this may be coincidental, but uh, it ended up happening around the same time that President Zelensky was visiting the White House with President Biden in which president ended up vowing to provide an additional $200 million to Ukraine. And in addition to that, there was also an attack against the infrastructure in the United States. So uh, anyways, China is believed to be behind this, but I've got the details to share with you in just a moment. But before we get started, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel as well as hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's go ahead and start with the video. China has done it again. China has hacked into some critical infrastructure in the United States and Americans are not happy about it. And of course, China is denying it as usual. But uh, anyways, as you can see right here, that China affiliated hackers ended up hitting some critical US infrastructure, computer systems for water, power, communications, and transportation bodies have all been affected. Hacking groups affiliated with China have targeted these critical infrastructure assets in the United States. Uh, this particular attack is seen as a part of China's uh, vote Typhoon cyber campaign, which the U.S. government has observed for around a year now. Hackers affiliated with the Chinese People's Liberation Army have allegedly intruded into the computer systems of dozens of critical infrastructure units of the U.S. government, which is obviously a federal crime. Uh, these include water and power utilities, as well as oil and gas pipelines and transportation and communication entities. It is speculated that this is part part of a broader effort by the PLA to hit logistics targets in terms of the U.S.-China conflict in the Pacific region. Uh, both China and the United States have blamed each other for years on cyber attacks. The latest series of alleged attacks from the Chinese have been referred to as the Volt Typhoon campaign. Key victims of the campaign include a port on the West Coast water utility system in Hawaii, which is a critical oil and gas pipeline, as well as a Texas power grid operator. Hopefully it doesn't affect my home and the power here. But uh, anyways, they're saying that so far such intrusions have not caused any disruptions. However, the attack on the systems in Hawaii have been suggested to aim at a potential disruptions to the operations of the Pacific Fleet. The hackers running the Volt Typhoon campaign have stolen employee credentials with backdoor entries and have used arbitrary home and workplace routers to hide their specific tracks. So uh, anyways, yes, this particular Volt Typhoon is a organized program that is going on in China right now. I believe it was started back in 2001 and it is funded by China government, which is obviously a direct punch to the United States. Could this be the reason why China was flying that particular uh, random balloon over the United States? It very well could be. Now, the Volt Typhoon is nothing new. We have heard about this from previous in regards to some uh, other types of hacks that ended up going on in which uh, we actually heard from this uh, directly from Microsoft in which they uncovered uh, this particular targeted malicious activity that was focused to compromise uh, the credential access and network systems here in the United States. Now, uh, you can look on Microsoft's website. They actually talk about this particular thing. As you can see, it says that the Volt type targets U.S. critical infrastructure with living off the land techniques. Uh, what they're talking about is that they have designed this particular agent to sit and store on U.S. devices such as computer systems without being detected and being able to send that information back directly to this particular China affiliated group. Now again, notice that on this Microsoft's website, this was actually noted back earlier this year in May. 
May of 2023, which obviously we are still seeing this thing arise, which we just had this major attack on the United States on yesterday, uh, December the 12th. So uh, anyways, like I said, this thing is nothing new. We have heard about it previously. But the question is, why haven't the United States did something about it? Have we spoken to the Chinese leaders about this particular thing? Have we done anything to uh, block their efforts in regards to these affiliated tax? Uh, have we actually tried to attack them in the process? Uh, those questions are still unknown. But uh, anyways, just so you know that Chinese has officially hacked into the United States, into our infrastructure, such as utilities, oil, gas, and things of that sort, which uh, guys, if they end up disrupting something like that, something as massive as that, that could be huge in the United States. We could see something much worse than what we saw during the pandemic. Well, how do you guys feel about that? Does that make you a little bit nervous? It does make me nervous about it. But uh, anyways, I'm just reporting the news to you today. But on top of them hacking the United States, they also hacked into Ukraine. Yes, we just received word that uh, Ukraine's top mobile operator uh, was hit with the biggest cyber attack of war in history. And as you can see, this particular date happened on December the 12th as well. So uh, these particular Chinese hackers are, they are busy at work. Obviously, they pretty much had time to plan this because they have infiltrated our systems as early as May of this year. What will the United States do? Will they respond to these particular attacks? It hasn't been 24 hours yet, but we still haven't received direct word from the president as of yet. But I will say uh, uh, if we ended up having Trump as the president right now, I'm sure Trump would have responded less than 12 hours. Wouldn't you guys agree? Comment down below and let me know if you agree or not. Uh, but anyways, in regards to this particular Ukraine's attack, it says that Ukraine's biggest mobile network operator said it hoped to restore its operations by Wednesday after coming under what appeared to be the largest cyber attack since Russia launched its war on the country back in February of 2022. Now, now, Tuesday's attack on Kaviv Star, which is their mobile carrier, which has more than half of Ukrainians' population as mobile subscribers, knocked out services, damaged IT infrastructure, and put millions of people in danger of not receiving alerts of potential Russian air assaults. And yes, it also disrupted the air raid alert systems themselves in parts of Kyiv. Uh, the company's chief executive officer uh, said that the attack was a result of the war with Russia. War is also happening in cyberspace and unfortunately we have been hit as a result of this particular ongoing war. Uh, the attack significantly damaged our infrastructure, limited access for individuals. We could not counter it at the virtual level so we shut down Kavistar physically to limit the enemy's access altogether. Uh, but anyways, like I said, this particular attack is the largest on history that we have seen, guys. It's shut down pretty much all of 50% of their mobile carriers uh, access to the internet, if you will. And you guys know how we feel about our internet, right? What would you do if you ended up having no internet for at least 12 hours? Would you go crazy? I mean, we pretty much live and die by our phones every single day. So uh, anyways, the United States needs to look on this as a potential threat to the United States because this exact thing can happen in the United States. And if it does, Americans are being unable to use their mobile devices. Uh, that could become crucial. A lot of people depend on these mobile devices on a daily basis, if you will. Uh, so anyways, guys, we just talked about the major largest cyber attacks in history have just hit the United States as well as uh, Ukraine. So uh, anyways, guys, I will say this right here. This might be a little bit coincidental, but this all happened during the same time that uh, Ukrainian's president, President Zelensky, was visiting Washington to talk to Congress about providing more uh, monetary aid for Ukraine. As you can see right here in this particular picture, uh, Zelensky was walking down the aisle with Senate Majority Leader as well as Senate Minority Leader, uh, and they are all looking like the boss. However, it does look like the person in the middle is the main boss. Wouldn't you 
you guys agree? Zelensky is walking like a powerful man, like the president of the United States. However, he is the president of Ukraine. But uh, anyways, he was visiting Washington uh, on Capitol Hill on Tuesday to make the last pitch to Congress to provide more U.S. military aid to support his country's defense against Russia's ongoing invasion. Congressional Republicans have held up on the aid package that the Biden administration proposed for Kyiv. The White House has warned that previously allotted aid for Ukraine could run out by the end of the year without any congressional action as the country faces another tough winter of more fighting in this particular unprovoked war. So uh, anyways, that is exactly why Zelensky was here. He wanted to meet with Congress. He wanted to plead his case. He also wanted to meet with President Biden as well uh, to talk about why he needs more money, why uh, the United States needs to continue to support Ukraine in this particular effort uh, against Russia. And uh, at that particular meeting, guys, he wasn't able to get very far. The Republicans were holding out and couldn't make up their mind whether or not they wanted to be able to support more military aid to Ukraine. However, President Biden trumped all of that because uh, by the end of that meeting, finding out that the Republicans were not on board with approving of more aid to Ukraine, President Biden said, look, I am the leader of this free world country. I am going to put my foot down and make the executive order in which President Biden ended up announcing $200 million in additional military aid to Ukraine uh, while Zelensky was visiting the White House. And yes, guys, the United States has roughly $4.4 billion remaining in weapons that it can provide to Ukraine that uh, we are pretty much hoarding these uh, military weapons in our Pentagon stockpiles. Uh, so anyways, guys, that is some breaking news that we are still committing more money, more military aid to Ukraine in regards to this ongoing invasion from Russia. What do you guys think about that? It's very troublesome to know that the United States and President Biden, the Biden administration, is willing to continue to provide more money, more weapons, more military aid, more everything to another country when the United States continues to have people in the United States that are suffering. People don't have nowhere to live, don't have food to put on the table, on the verge of losing their house, on the verge of losing their credit, on the verge of losing their cars, can't afford to put food on the table for their children, uh, but yet and still, we have still not seen any type of support on a federal level that is going to the American people. How does that make you feel in regards to those of you that live in the United States? I will say it makes me very, very sad to know this, that we continue to approve of things like this, $200 million to fight an unprovoked war, and we don't provide any type of money, let alone $200 million to the American people. Can they at least provide a fourth stimulus check? Wouldn't you guys like to see a fourth stimulus check? I know I sure would, but anyways, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But uh, anyways, guys, I would love to get your thoughts on this. Please take the time to comment down below in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this whole entire cyber attacks on the United States and Ukraine, as well as President Biden approving of more money, more money added to the billions of dollars that we have already provided to Ukraine. And here we are adding an additional $200 million. Anyways, let me know what you think about this. Outside of all that, I hope all this information in this video was helpful to you today. Well, anyways, that's all we have for you today, but feel free to check out some of the items down below in the description. There are a couple of opportunities for you to earn some free Free money or some free cash such as signing up for the Amazon Prime membership where you can get 30 days for free which is a great time right now because people are trying to get their last minute shopping for Christmas out of the way and what a perfect way to sit at home and order these items and have them delivered to your home totally free also don't forget about some other options that are down below some suggestions for some great Christmas ideas as well be sure to check those out and then pair that with the number one cashback website out there which is Rakuten and right now if you sign up with Rakuten they're going to give you an additional $30 bonus on top of the cashback that you receive from making your purchases but anyways those are just a few but be sure to check out all of them down below anyways
always, if you enjoyed today's content and you want to see more, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like today's video, then go ahead and hit the like button for us. It really helps out this channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But anyways, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.